The cost of living is top of mind for Canadians, as you heard us mention. And Statistics Canada has found that prices for everyday items are rising at their fastest level in a decade. That's across the board, from housing to gas to groceries. Federal party leaders are all pledging ways to bring down those costs. Whether it's our measures on housing or our measures uh, on childcare, those are examples of the kinds of things we'll be talking about throughout this campaign to make life more affordable for Canadians. Do they want to choose to vote for someone like Justin Trudeau who continues to allow the house housing crisis to get worse or to vote for new Democrats who are going to fight to make sure that they can have a home that's in their budget? Canada's recovery plan is all about getting wages up, getting people working, tackling rising prices and giving Canadians a break. Sean Fraser is the Liberal candidate in Nova Scotia. He's in Halifax. From Toronto, Ontario NDP candidate Paul Taylor. And in Cornwall, Ontario, Conservative candidate Aaron Duncan. Eric Duncan, pardon me. Um, so I'm going to start by asking all three of you the exact same question. And of course, we are looking for a direct answer here. Uh, the first question I want to put to you is, you know, We've all, uh, Canadians know this, the cost of living is on the rise, everything from food to housing to gas. We want to talk about what your parties are prepared to do to make life more affordable. I'm asking each one of you to narrow down what you see as the one biggest challenge when it comes to the cost of living and specifically identify what your party would do to address that chop top challenge. Um, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Fraser. Sure. Look, there's no question that the cost of living is front of mind for Canadians over the course of this pandemic and as we head into the recovery. Uh, it's been our focus to support middle class and low income families from the time we took office, whether it was the Canada Child Benefit served through the pandemic or now introducing child care plans to increase uh, participation in the workforce, particularly among women, by providing child care at just $10 a day. There's not one silver bullet to do these uh, to, to reduce the cost of living for families. It's going to be a suite of policies that provide additional income support to people, that encourage more people to take part in the workforce and create opportunities for Canadians from different walks of life. So I get that there's not one silver bullet here and that this is obviously an incredibly complex issue, but we're trying to narrow down for voters, you know, uh, what the one thing is. And so you mentioned child care, that $10 a day uh, plan that your, your, uh, the Liberals have been trying to roll out across the country. Uh, that I'm clear on that answer. That's what you see as one of the biggest challenges right now that it would be a priority if the Liberals are reelected? There's no question that child care is a pressing uh, item for families right across Canada. There are families who are spending literally thousands of dollars a month uh, to, to put their kids into child care. There are parents and disproportionately women who are actually choosing to stay home because it's cheaper to take care of their kids at home than it is to actually go to work and then send their kids into child care. By reducing the cost of child care to $10 a day, we're not only going to be advancing an important social policy, it's one of the most important growth-oriented economic policies that we can put forward because employers are desperately looking for new workers to join the workforce to pursue growth opportunities. And by introducing opportunities for more parents and women in particular to join the workforce, by introducing affordable child care right across Canada, Absolutely, this is an affordability issue. And I'm just disappointed that the Conservatives have committed to tear apart the agreements that we've now reached with so many provinces. I'm going to go to Mr. Duncan next. I'll give you an opportunity to respond to that. But I do want to hear uh, what your, what your, from your perspective, from your party's perspective, that number one challenge when it comes to affordability and what will your party do to address that top challenge? Quickly, you heard the first answer there. The first two questions, not a single new idea. Things they did six years ago, child care plan that comes into effect several years down the road. We have a plan on day two, Aaron O'Toole released the Secure Our Future, our future Plan, a five-point plan that's going to lower the cost of living, get our economy fired up and going again. We have early on in the campaign, full details of getting businesses going, incentivized to hire workers, get people back to work. Our child care plan has received a lot of positive praise in the last couple of days because it comes into effect this fall. Families will save thousands of dollars this fall. It will encourage more women to get into the workforce as part of our recovery, getting our economy going again. And as a result, I think it's going to create economic growth and it's going to lower our cost of living. We have a detailed plan, conservative.ca slash plan, five point plan. Aaron's been hammering it home every day. And you just heard the Liberals, things they did six years ago, things are going to be on the road and not one single answer. We're five days into the campaign. The Liberals still have lots of word salad, but no plan. We have a full, detailed plan we're proud of, 
and getting it out to Canadians. Mr. Taylor, before I get to you, I want to follow up on a point that Mr. Duncan made there. You're talking about your child care plan. Um, uh, what we have seen the Liberals promise and make deals across the country, there are still some provinces that don't have deals in place, Ontario and Alberta, uh, but they offer a $10 a day child care plan. Your party has promised uh, to scrap those plans and instead offer families a 75% tax credit. However, private child care providers can set their prices at whatever they like, so a tax credit doesn't cap costs in the same way. What do you say to parents who like that $10 a day plan? I think it's Mr. Taylor or myself. That's you, Ms. Uh, just to follow up on your question, and then I will ask Mr. Taylor. That's what I yeah, thought. Mr. So Duncan, no, sorry. That, we, no problem. Well, again, to that point, as our plan comes to effect this fall, it's going to help low-income and middle-income families who need the assistance most very, very much. It's going to create spaces because it's going to give a tool and an incentive right away immediately this fall, not years down the road, to allow and make it more affordable for women to be able to participate in the workforce. They can play a key part this fall and in the coming months as part of our economic recovery. They're going to save thousands and thousands of dollars by having more women go into the workforce. It's going to increase demand. And again, as always, we work with our provincial and municipal partners I've served as a mayor before I got into federal politics of making sure we have the spaces. But again, one of the things that's very big is our plan comes into effect now, not if you re-elect the Liberals. And again, they've been promising this since I've been in childcare back in early 1990s. They lose credibility when they say, give us a ninth try and we'll do it this time. They have no credibility on this. We have a plan. It's detailed. It comes into effect. And parents are receptive to it across the country so far. In a moment, I will let Mr. Fraser respond to that, but I haven't heard from Mr. Taylor yet, so I want to go to the NDP's position. What do you see as the number one challenge when it comes to the rising cost of cost of living for Canadians, and what is the one thing that you think is the most important thing an NDP government would do to alleviate that challenge? Well, you know, the first thing, when we have a conversation about affordability, we have to anchor that in housing. You know, for too many families, safe and affordable housing is simply increasingly out of reach. And that's, of course, due to thanks, um, that's, of course, due to skyrocketing rents and ballooning, ballooning home prices. You know, renters are being forced out of the cities that they grew up in, and that gap between who can afford to buy a home and who can't is widening significantly. You know, I've talked to so many young working families looking to buy a house, and what's happening is they're bidding against billion dollar corporations. And these corporations aren't buying homes or building communities, they're focused on profit. And after six years in government, the liberal plan is simply inadequate compared to the scale of the crisis that we face. We need bolder action. So what we do is we recognize that, you know, a third of Canadians are renters. So we're gonna create at least half half a million units of quality, affordable housing over the next decade. And we're also going to provide immediate rent relief for families struggling to make ends meet right now. In addition, we're going to provide, introduce measures to stop the big money and the speculation that's been, as we all know, artificially inflating housing prices across the country. We're talking about things like a 20% foreign buyers tax, which of course is going to make it more expensive and less lucrative. Housing is less lucrative of an investment uh, uh, for folks outside of the country. And then of course, ending money laundering in the housing market. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I want to ask you a follow-up question. Before the campaign kicked off, uh, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh presented his campaign promises to Canadians, those pledges he wanted to make, but it hadn't been costed out yet by the parliamentary budget officer. Um, if a price tag comes back that is simply, your party looks at it, it's too high. It, is there any sort of limit to what the party has sort of set out as to if the parliamentary budget officer takes a look at this, gives an assessment of how much all of these promises are going to cost? Is there any sort of limit to what a, an NDP government would would spend here? And would you be willing to claw back some of your promises if you think there is a number that it's just too high? Well, you know what I hear when I go door to door, um, pretty much in every part of the riding is housing and housing affordability is a huge priority for folks. And as such, it's a huge, huge pride provide um, uh, priority for the NDP. So we're going to do what it can, do what we can to make life more affordable for folks, make access to housing more affordable to folks. And that's because that's exactly what we've been hearing. And we know that that's going to have a huge impact on the lives of folks from coast to coast to coast. Um, uh, but if is there is there a price limit that that is there a, a, a price tag that's too high for any of these promises from is from the NDP's perspective that you'd be willing to claw things back promises back? 
I think what we haven't seen is we haven't seen a response that's in line with the scale of the problem. So what we're going to do is focused on using resources to address this issue once and for all. It's been allowed to balloon. We know that, you know, even going back to the early 90s, you know, um, we used to build more affordable housing. We used to make it easier for people to access housing. That's what we're uh, prioritizing. And we're going to do that until we uh, tackle this crisis. Really quickly, I'm going to go back to Mr. Fraser because we heard attacks on the Liberals from both the Conservative and the NDP here about, you know, you your government has been in power for six years uh, and, and there, there are still challenges that remain. What do you say in response to those attacks? Uh, well, look, with respect to the attack on our child care plan, there's actually literally signed agreements now. We're being accused of uh, having sat on this since uh, my, my colleague Eric said since he was in, in uh uh, kindergarten. Uh, the reality is this is a commitment that we've made in the most recent throne speech. We now have signed agreement with the majority of provinces. And when I compare it uh, next to the Conservative plan, it looks like they haven't actually talked to anybody who operates in the child care space. The bottlenecks when you actually talk to people who work in this field are not uh, just sending uh, tax rebates to families who can already afford care. It's making sure that we have enough quality trained early childhood educators. It's making sure that we actually increase the supply of spaces in communities where there is no child care availability today. If it was simply a matter of getting money to families, this problem would have been solved when we stopped sending child care checks to millionaires and introduced the Canada Child Benefit to put more money in the pockets of nine out of 10 Canadian families. Of course, over the course of this campaign, there'll be additional commitments that we roll out. But when it comes to affordability and child care specifically, this is literally a, a plan that's been informed by experts and will be one of the most robust child care systems available anywhere in the developed world. All right, we're going to pause the conversation here. We are going to be having so many more conversations on this program as well as on CBC News about affordability, about childcare, about housing, and all of these policies because top of mind for Canadians, coast to coast to coast voters, is how are they going to be able to afford the cost of living? I want to say thank you to all three of you for taking the time to uh, engage and debate on this. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. Take care. Thank you so thank much you. for having us. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News channel or click the link for another video.